Hello everyone, this is Jatin again. Today we are going to practically see the impulse response of an RC circuit. So here we have an RC circuit. It consists of a resistance of 1 kilo ohms and a capacitance of 1 microfarad. These two probes provide the input to the RC circuit and through these two wires we fetch the output out on the oscilloscope. As an input, we give impulses at regular intervals to the RC circuit. You can see this sharp narrow pulses here on your screen. We know that the impulse response of an RC circuit is an exponentially decaying function. Since we have given impulse as an input to the RC circuit, on the oscilloscope we observe that the output is indeed an exponentially decaying function showing that if any system is given impulse as an input then the output is the system's impulse response. Talking about impulses, not only in electrical systems but in everyday life like things happening around us we observe impulse and their impulse responses. Let's take up some of those examples. Uh, so as Jatin has mentioned there are a lot of uh, real life examples of impulses. I'm Megesham. I'm going to talk about some of these real life examples now. So uh, uh, you have seen a nail and a hammer. So you have a nail and you have a hammer. So when you you know hammer the nail as such, the the contact of the nail and the hammer is just for you know a few milliseconds. But the 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 momentum or the force that you impact in that few seconds is really large. So you can consider this as an impulse being given to the nail. And uh, you know you have seen in most of these movies the guy gets a heart attack and then they do a defibrillator and then they kick start the heart. So let me just talk about this one. You have a battery here, you have a battery and you have two switches which will connect the battery to a capacitor, there is an inductor and there is one more switch and then here you have the patient's heart. So what you do in a defibrillator is you know you have the battery then you charge the capacitor and then you open the switches. Now it's totally charged. Now it's charged. So the guy is holding the defibrillator. As soon as he places it across the heart and then jump starts the heart. So what it does is you close the switch. It completes a circuit between the capacitor and the heart and all the energy across this you know given to the heart as an impulse. So basically that's why you call it kick starting the heart. And uh, let's get to one more example. The other example should be you have seen, you most of you might have seen your parents or you know you yourself must might be having cars. So when you switch on the car with a key, so the engine how it starts is, is basically a small spark comes when you switch on the key, and this spark starts the engine. And then it's similar with tube lights. So you have if you have a tube light with a uh, spark plug. So what it does is it gives a small spark to start the tube light. That's also can be considered as an impulse. And uh, let's talk about uh, momentum change now. Suppose a guy is traveling in a car and he's traveling real fast. Suppose a guy is traveling in a car and he's traveling real fast. And then I don't know maybe he didn't watch it but he meets a brick wall. And then you know the car just comes to a stop. I mean it's damaged. but say the car has a mass m and it's moving at a velocity v and then it as soon as it hits the brick wall it comes to a stop as soon say the car has a mass m and it's moving with a velocity v and then as soon as the car so let's say the car has a mass m and a velocity v it's moving and then it hits a brick wall so the car crashes but it you know it goes from velocity v to zero after it crashes it's zero obviously in a few milliseconds. So the momentum which was first mv it's now 0. So if the car is moving really fast say at say 60 miles per hour and you know cars weigh you know 2 tons or something like that which is 2000 kilos. So the momentum change the change of momentum from it's moving let's say assume it's moving at a constant speed the momentum change from this to 0 and this time here is very very less milliseconds you know less than that 
because you just hit a brick wall. Now, if you look at the change of momentum, this would be an impulse. Momentum just went from being so high to zero. How many of you have, uh, you know, just got a shock like, or you know, touched a burning pan? Then you just retrieve your hand back because the neurons they actually send an electrical impulse to the brain saying, oh, I touched something bad, so let's get back. Or you know when somebody tries to hit you, you will like close your face all together because it is kind of an, you get all these impulses in everyday life. Your, your body is basically made up of electrical impulses. So the signals, the body sends you, the touch, the tap, these are all electrical impulses. So your body is made up of electrical impulses. So impulses practically make a lot of sense. But I need to mention this thing, an ideal impulse will not exist practically because an ideal impulse is infinity at a single point. So practically we say impulse is something you know a signal which has re high amount of energy or you know not high amount of energy, a signal which has high value in a very less amount of time and impulses can be in many domains. Now you have seen impulses in time. How does an impulse in frequency look like? You will get to know more about this when we talk about Fourier transform because a pure sinusoid is an impulse in frequency domain. So you know when you talk about impulse ask in which domain because a spark plug it is an impulse as an input but how? Is it impulse in time? Is it impulse in you know heat? So an impulse is basically a signal which is really high in a really small uh, range of the base unit we are con considering. The base unit can be time, frequency, I mean whatever. So I have given you some examples of impulses which occur in practical life and uh, now impulses are there everywhere, you just have to notice them. I would like to see you guys discussing on the forums on what can be impulses and what cannot be impulses and uh, thank you very much.